I bought 12 broken PS4s to see if I could fix them and if I could make money. Let's get started. Now most of these, I have no idea what's wrong with them. There are a few that are marked. I bought these off of eBay in various lots to make a total of 12. So the first thing I'm gonna do is test them, see if I can verify the problem, and then see if I can fix them. And here we are with PS4 number one. Let's see if it turns on. It doesn't beep, but it does turn on so far. Let's see if we get a signal on the TV. Okay, for console number one, it does not take the disc all the way in, so that's the first problem. I don't see any other problems so far, but that's the first thing we need to fix. Now for the rest of these, I'm gonna speed through some of the diagnosis, give you the final report at the end, and then we'll get to fixing. Now I have them all diagnosed. We got a lot of disk drive problems, a couple hard drive problems, an HDMI issue, and several other things. Now that I have them diagnosed, I'm gonna see how many I can fix. Before I get started on this first repair, I have a very important announcement. Now, when I was first starting working on PS4s, I had to get some tools because I didn't have the correct tools. And all I could find were like large repair kits with a ton of stuff in them, but unfortunately just not everything that I needed to repair a PS4. For example, I couldn't find a repair kit that had like all the little bits and stuff, plus like a cleaning brush and pliers to pull off connectors and stuff like that. So unfortunately I had to buy kits that had like all this stuff I didn't need just to get the stuff I did need. And then I had to buy all this other stuff separately. And that's always been something that's been very frustrating to me. So today I'm announcing the release of the Tronix Fix PS4 repair kit. Now this PS4 repair kit is fairly small, but it has everything you need to fix a PS4. It's got the screwdriver, it's got the bits, it's got a cleaning brush, it's got the pliers, it has everything. But the great thing about this is the price can be super low because it doesn't have a bunch of stuff you don't need. I'm releasing this kit today for $19.99 and you can buy it at the first link in the description at tronixfixstore.com. I'll be using this repair kit to take apart this first PS4. I normally use electric screwdrivers because they're a lot faster when I have to do a lot of them so I will switch to that at some point but I'll use this for this first repair just so you can see everything that's included. Now with all that being said let's get started on our first repair. So for PS4 number one, it does work, it won't pull in the disc. So the first thing we need to do is get the bottom cover off and get the disc drive out and have a look at it. Wow, and this is pretty dirty inside. So we're gonna need to give all this a real good cleaning. But first let's get the disc drive out and get this fixed. And here you can see the main problem with this disk drive. These rollers are absolutely disgusting. So I'm gonna get these cleaned off and then get the rest of the disk drive cleaned as well.
Okay, we have this PS4 together enough to test it. Once we test it and verify that it works, then we'll get the rest of it clean, but we gotta make sure it works first. And here's our disc. Let's see if it goes in and if it spins. Goes in nice. All right, and it spins up normally. So the disc drive fixed. Now we just gotta get it all cleaned up and then it'll be ready to go. I'm not gonna show much of the cleaning as we've got a lot of PS4s to fix, but I'll show you when it's done. I do wanna show this part of the cleaning because this type of fan is exactly what this brush is for. This cleaning brush gets just right in there and watch carefully and you'll see it get most of all that stuff right off. Now this, there's like hair and stuff caked on pretty good to the fan. So this one's gonna take a little bit extra to get off, but you can see how it's just pulling that stuff right up out of there. These bristles are nice and thick and strong. So that's gonna get in there and get all that stuff just pulled right out. We also do need to get this from the Wi-Fi antenna. There we go. So the other thing about this cleaning brush is it does get right along the sides. You can just go right along the edges and it fits right in there. You can see this gap right here where the dirt collects. This can just get right in there and just get clean out any dirt real quick. Now the problem when you see a fan that dirty is that means the heat sink, which is right back here, is gonna be super dirty as well. So I'm gonna get this taken apart. I'll show you how to clean the heat sink and that's the last thing I'm gonna show you on this one. And then I'll show you guys when it's all done and move on to number two. As you've probably noticed, this one actually did have a few cockroaches in it, which is disgusting, but it does happen sometimes. And now let's look at the heat sink. And there we go. Now you can see exactly what causes most overheating problems on these. So what happens is the fan spins around, spins air through this. While it's spinning, it catches up any dust or debris. And that gets clogged right on the heat sink, which makes it so the air doesn't flow through the heat sink, which doesn't cool it. So we got to get all this off of here. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at how thick that is. That's how thick it was. So this was probably overheating pretty quickly after they started a game. So then we take our brush, just get all in the fins and brush that all out. There we go. Now I've got to get the fan cleaned up, all the rest of this dust cleaned up, and then we can put it all back together and see how it works. And now we have this one pretty clean. We're not gonna get it perfect, especially because this one did have cockroaches in it. So we're not gonna get it perfect, and I will sell it just as a unit that did have cockroaches in it, so the buyer knows exactly what they're getting. Now we have it fixed, and we have it cleaned. Let's see if it works, and it plays the disc. Okay, takes it in normally, that's good news. And there we go, we have the disc playing and it's pulled up on the screen. So PS4 number one is fixed, let's move on to PS4 number two. PS4 number two also won't pull in the disc, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this fixed. If there's something strange in here or something interesting, I'll let you guys know, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix it off camera just so we can get this video moving along. So the problem with this disc drive actually is pretty interesting. When I took the disc drive out, I found this white piece laying in the bottom here. This piece is the part in the previous repair that you saw went between the two rollers right here. I'm gonna get this disc drive apart and then I'll show it to you a little bit closer. And this is what we find when I take this out. See one of the rollers is just laying in here. This is a very common problem with these. This roller is kind of scuffed up, but I think it'll be good enough to put back in. The disc won't go in super smooth, but it'll, it'll go in smooth enough that it won't cause any problems. I'm gonna get this cleaned up, then we'll pop this back on, clean the laser, and then we'll put it back in and see if it works. Now I've got the rollers back installed, the disc drive is back in the PS4, let's see if it works. Okay, it pulls in the disc nicely. And here we go, the disc is in the PS4, it's spinning, and it shows up on the screen right there. So PS4 number two is fixed, let's move on to number three. And here we go with PS4 number three. This PS4 works, it has a super loud fan and won't pull in discs. So I'm guessing we're gonna need to do a lot of cleaning and replace the fan. I'll skip the cleaning part and we'll go straight to replacing the fan on this one. And let's take a look at the heatsink and the fan. I expect the heatsink to be plugged, which it definitely is. And then we do need to replace this fan. Let me get it out so you can see exactly what's wrong with it. And here we go, this uh, shows what's wrong with the fan. If you listen carefully, I'll put my microphone up to it so you can hear the bearing, hopefully. 
I don't know if that came across on video, but the bearing inside the fan is definitely dirty. Unfortunately, there's no way to replace these bearings as they're like molded onto this metal piece. Oops. So we just have to replace the whole fan assembly. I'm gonna get this all cleaned out, install the fan, then put it all back together and see if it all works. Now we have number three cleaned, the fan replaced. Let's see if it all turns on and works properly. Okay, it pulls the disc in normally. And the fan is working 100% normal. It does show up on the screen right here, so the disc is working normally. Also, I do want to emphasize I clean the inside. The outsides of these have not been cleaned. We'll do all of that after we have all the repairs done. Let's move on to number four. So here we are with number four. This one has the blue light of death and a loud fan. Now the blue light of death is normally caused by a faulty APU or faulty solder joints under the APU. I don't do any of those types of repairs myself, but there is a trick I can show you called the washer trick. Most of you probably know about it, but I'll try it on this one and see if it works. Let's get started. So for the washer fix, we need to remove these two screws, put some washers underneath, tighten them back up, and then we'll see if it fixed it. And the reason this sometimes works is because it puts extra pressure on the APU and the motherboard. It kind of sandwiches them closer together so that sometimes will restore any faulty joints between the APU and the motherboard. Now that we have the washers installed, let's see if it turns on. And here we go, we do have the white light, we do have something on the screen. It looks like it might need the hard drive replaced as this message usually should only last just a, a few seconds and then it'll keep starting up. This one's been on here for a while, so I'm guessing it probably needs a new hard drive, but it looks like the washer trick did fix this one for now. Now the other problem with the washer trick is that there's no way to know how long it'll last. It could last for a day, it could last for years. There's just no way to know. Now since this one has the blue light of death, it needs a new fan and it probably needs a new hard drive and it also needs a thorough cleaning. I'm probably not actually gonna sell this one, so I'll probably take this one and use whatever parts I can to fix some of the other consoles. So for number four, while it technically is kind of fixable, we're gonna call this one not fixable. I might even go and just sell it on eBay for parts to someone who wants a parts console. Either way, we're gonna move on from number four. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the ones that have disk drive issues fixed. If there's one that has something interesting going on, I'll show it on camera. If not, I'll just do all of those off camera and then I'll update you guys when I'm done. I was able to fix all four of these disk drives on these four PS4s. It was all the typical stuff. They were dirty inside. The rollers needed to be cleaned. There was one that the rollers came out and the little white connecting rod was also out. So just the normal typical repairs on these. Let's move on to number five. And number five turns on, the blue LED is broken and the HDMI is broken. It has the white light of death. So I'm gonna get this one taken apart and then we'll check out the HDMI system. And now we have the motherboard ready to come out. We've got some new thermal paste here, so somebody has already tried to fix this one. Those are always fun. And you can see the whole entire middle of the HDMI port is gone. So that's what we need to fix on this one. There are also a few little components that are missing right there, so I will need to replace those. But let's get this port out, get a new one in, and then we can get those replaced. And there we go. I'm gonna push up on the port a little bit just to let it fall all the way down. There we go. And now that that's done, we're gonna clean up the pads where the new port is going to solder on. We're also gonna put some flux right here where the new two new little components are gonna be. So I'm gonna take the components from this donor board. Those two little components are what we need.
Ah, there we go. That's the perfect amount. Now I'll get this back in and then we'll see if it shows a picture on the screen. Now I have it together enough to test. Do you think it's gonna work? Let's check it out. Oh, black screen. Yes. So number five is definitely working. Let's make sure it all comes up on the screen how it should. So number five is definitely working properly. I still need to fully assemble it, fully clean it, and then fully test it and reset it to factory settings. But let's move on to the next PS4. Number six was one of the ones I fixed off camera, so now we're gonna look at number seven. And number seven has the blue light of death. The disc drive on it works. Let's see if we can fix the blue light of death. It won't take very long, so let's see if it'll work. Then we'll move on to the next one. And now we have the washers installed. Let's see if it starts up. And here we go, the washer fix did fix a second blue light of death. Once again, I won't be selling this just because I have no idea how long this fix will last. So I will use this just for parts, but technically it is at least somewhat fixed for now. Now PS4's number eight, nine, and 10 were all fixed off camera. They were more the ones with the disc drive problems that you guys have already seen. So we're gonna move on to the last two. They're two PS4 Slims. So far we fixed 10 out of 10, although two are the blue light of death. So technically I'm not gonna be selling those as fixed. But we only have two more to go. Let's see if we can make it 12 out of 12. Number 11 has loud clicking from the hard drive at startup, and then the disk drive also runs at startup. So let's check out the disk drive first, then we'll get the hard drive replaced after that. And now we can lift the plate off, have a look at the disk drive. So the first thing I notice is that it is bent. So that's the first thing we're gonna take a look at. Okay, we got a lot of stuff going on here. First of all, this arm is broken. We've got this piece that normally would slide in here, but that piece is broken, so that's not gonna work. Then we also have this connecting rod that normally goes between these two is also missing. Usually, if it hasn't been taken apart, it'll be rattling around inside the disk drive. But unfortunately, since this one's been taken apart, I think somebody's probably been in it and took it out. So unfortunately, that is a missing piece. The good news is that number 12 also has the blue light of death. And unfortunately on the PS4 Slim, that's not normally fixable with washers. I've never gotten it to work. So I'm gonna try one thing with this PS4 Slim. I'm gonna try and put a different hard drive in it. Every once in a while that will fix the blue light of death. So I'm gonna try that. If that doesn't work, then we know we can use this entire console for parts to fix number 11. So let's try that hard drive first and see if that works. So new hard drive installed on number 12. Let's see if it turns on and if it shows up on the TV. Unfortunately for number 12, it does not show up on the TV. The blue light is just constantly blinking. I hear no noises from the hard drive. Usually you can hear the hard drive making little noises. So unfortunately number 12 is dead. The good news about that is we can steal the hard drive from number 12 and put it in number 11 and fix number 11. So let's do that next and see if it all works when we're done. And unfortunately, I just keep running into bad news on number 11. So the first thing is that the controller just doesn't connect. It does charge, but it doesn't actually connect when you press the button. So that's the first bit of bad news. Now, the next thing is that it does have a white light, but it doesn't show anything on the TV. So this means a problem in the HDMI system, which isn't a big deal on its own, but these things are adding up. Let me turn it over and show you more problems on the motherboard. And here is the other bad news. So this is the ethernet port. These are all the little components that have obviously burned out. This is normally from a lightning strike. Now what that means is most likely lightning hit this and it took out the south bridge. That's what causes the controller to not connect. And then it also took out the HDMI system, which probably made the HDMI chip go bad. And then it also took out the ethernet port and the components behind it. 
Now, normally all these things are fixable except for the south bridge. The south bridge actually is fixable, to, but it's not something I can do here with the equipment that I have. So unfortunately, number 11 is also gonna be not fixable. Now that I've taken a look at all 12 PS4s, I found nine that were totally fixable. There were two that had the blue light of death that did get fixed, but that's not something that I normally resell. And then we do have this number 11 that's just not fixable at all. So now it's time to talk numbers, but before I do, don't forget about the Tronix Fix PS4 Toolkit. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to purchase one for yourself at tronixfixstore.com. So I bought all of these PS4s for a total of $1,093.28. The sale price for a used PS4 in decent condition on eBay is $140. The number of fixed units is nine, and when we times these two numbers, we get $1,260 in potential profit minus the buy price, and we have a total potential profit of $166.72. Now a couple things to keep in mind, I did use parts to repair the PS4s that I fixed obviously, but I also do have three PS4s that I didn't fix that I can either steal parts out of or I can actually sell the parts on eBay. So I actually probably could even make more profit on that, but I'm also not gonna take away any profit for the parts that I used to repair the PS4s. Now another thing to keep in mind is $166 isn't necessarily that much profit, but you have to keep in mind I did this for a YouTube video, so I wasn't quite as picky as I normally would be if I was trying to just make profit on these. Let me know what you guys think I did right or think I did wrong down in the comment section below. If you wanna see another great video about me fixing more broken eBay junk, I'll put a link up on the screen right now so you can hang out with me over there. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.